All right, we're going to talk about uh, how we can change a function or change the graph of a function. In particular, we're going to look at how we can translate these things. Uh, so we're going to assume we're given some function. We can look at its graph. And we're going to look at two different uh, ways to change it. First, is how to change it vertically. And this is going to involve shifting it up or down, but also scaling it up and down. And the second is how can we change it horizontally? So this basically means looking at what happens in the domain and can we shift it left or right or scale it in and out uh, left and right. Okay? We're going to first focus on the vertical change and then talk about how to do it in terms of the horizontal change. So in terms of the vertical change, there's two things we can do. So focusing on the vertical, the first thing we can do is take the function and add or subtract some number. Right? So we're going to assume k is just some number. And the idea is this. Suppose I give you a value of x, and I'm going to draw a new function. And for this new function, this point on the new graph is you're going to be the same value of x, so it's going to be moving up vertically. So we don't change the x, so it's only going to go up or down. And every point is just going to be either adding or subtracting some number, depending on whether or not k is positive or negative. And so what we end up with is basically the same graph, only shifted up. So this may be, for example, g of x plus 1 g of x plus 2, plus 2, we just keep shifting this thing up. Likewise, k could be a negative number. For example, if k is minus 1, that's the same thing as subtracting. So this would be g of x minus 1, g of x minus 2, and as long as we keep subtracting, we're just going to take that graph and shift it down. Okay? Now, there's another way to get a, a horizontal change, and that would be to just take this original g and multiply it by some number. We'll call it a. Okay. So let's start over here. We're going to ask what happens if we multiply by some number a. So we start with our original g. The idea is this. I start with a value x, and this point on the graph is going to be x, g of x. Let's assume, assume that a is a positive number bigger than 1. And I'm going to graph the new value x, and then a times g of x, because this is my new function is a times g. And if a is bigger than 1, it's going to take this and just magnify it. It's going to make it bigger. But notice down here, when I'm right there, that multiplication isn't going to have as nearly as big of an effect. So the multiplication is going to be magnifying whatever distance I have here, this vertical distance. So what's going to end up happening is I may have something like this. So this would be 2 times g of x. This would be 3 times g of x. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my graph and I'm stretching it up or scaling it up in the vertical direction. Now, if a is a number between 0 and 1, what's going to happen is when I multiply it by g, it's going to want to try to bring it down closer. Oops, that's a bad start. To the x-axis. So for example, if I do that, that would be 1 half g. If a is a negative number, then what's going to happen is it's going to flip the sign, and so this would be, say, x minus g of x. I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So what's it going to do is flip it around the x-axis. And then if I multiply by a number less than minus 1, I might get 
get something like this. So now I'm going to stretch it like so. And if I make it times, say, minus a half, it's going to get closer to the x-axis, but it's going to flip it in the opposite direction. Okay. Now, let's talk about horizontal changes. I'm going to ask, what happens if I change the input? So now what I just did for the output is I could either add to the output or multiply by the output. And I'm going to do the same thing. So what happens? What if I add to the output? Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay. We're going to play the same kind of game. We're going to ask what happens if h is a positive number versus what if it's a negative number. We've got to be careful now. We're not looking at what happens in terms of the output. We're asking about the input. So this is going to change what's going on on the horizontal scale. So let's go back to our G. And again, if I pick a value for x here, this is the point x, g of x. Okay. Now notice, suppose I pick a point here that's at x minus h. And if I look at the point x minus h, so I plug that value for x in, the height is going to be the same as it is over here. So this is going to be the point x minus h g of x. So this is a no change in my y. And this is going to be true for any point over here. And what ends up happening then is this is going to be, say, g of x plus h. And remember, h is a positive number, and it just shifted my graph to the left. So for example, if I have g of x plus 1, g of x plus 2, say g of x plus 3, I'm going to get graphs that look like this. If I plug in and h is a negative number, instead of shifting to the left, it's going to move it in the other direction. It's going to go off to the right. What am I going to have? So this would be g of x minus 1, g of x minus 2. Okay. So if h is a positive number, it's going to move things to the left. If h is a negative number, it's going to move things to the right. Okay. Now, what happens if we multiply that x by some number? So what are we going to call that? We're going to call that m. And what we had before is we basically scaled things left or up and down when we had the a on the outside. We have an m on the inside, we're going to basically scale things left and right. So let's go back and look at our g. Play the same game. Suppose that's a value for x. This is going to be the point x, g of x. I'm going to assume m is bigger, positive number bigger than 1. Now, if I look at the point 1 over mx, if x is bigger than 1 and positive, then x, 1 over m times x is going to be smaller than x. So it's going to want to come down to here. Oops. If I plug that in, oops, sorry, let me start over. So this is going to be m. And that value of x I plug in here, so I replace that with 1 over m. I get g of x. So this thing now is going to be the point 1 over, m, 1 over m x g of x. So it's going to have the same height. And basically, I'm basically just going to start squeezing all of these things down. And what I end up with... This is going to be mx. Okay. Now this is m 
greater than 1. If m is between 0 and 1, this number is going to be pushed out to here. And what will I end up happening is this will be g of m of x. Oops, be careful. It's not going to include 0 or 1 if it's between 0 and 1. If m is a negative number, then what's going to happen is this number here is going to be over here, and the whole thing is going to flip. And so I'll have something over here. It's going to be 1 over mx if m is less than 0. So what's going to happen then if m is negative is I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to flip it like a mirror image to show up over here. And if this m is less than minus 1, it's going to be steeper or squished in. If m is between uh, 0 and minus 1, it's going to be more spread out. Okay. Let's look at an example. I want to graph, let's call this H, since we just use G. So this is going to be one half in G's. Uh, three times X minus five squared. What is this? I'm basically I'm taking something squared and I'm doing this kind of thing to it. Let me change this a little bit. This is not quite. Let me do that. Sorry. Okay. What am I doing here? I am taking this thing. I'm multiplying it by a half and adding 4. So this is going to be 1 half g plus 4. And then on the inside, I'm basically whatever I'm squaring, it's this whole thing. So this says take that quantity and square it. So if I can graph g, I can graph this now. What is g? g is just a parabola. Okay. So let's see. What am I doing here? Now this is a little bit tricky in that I'm going to scale it and shift it. But I, everywhere I see an x, I don't see x plus some k. So I've got to be a little careful here. So it's basically that. So this is really one half of g times three times that. Okay. So now this is a negative number. So this means shift to the right five thirds. So I'm going to take my parabola here. But because of that. I'm going to take that parabola and squeeze it in. So it's really going to be like that. Okay. Now I can focus on the uh, vertical parts. So what does this say? This says shift it up four. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. So I'm going to have this thing like this. But now, what does this say? This thing takes that and kind of because this is scaling it vertically, scaling it by a half, I'm going to have something that looks like that. Okay. So this is going to be, get rid of my markings here. I just only did that for partial credit. But this is going to be the function 1 half 3x minus 5 squared plus 4. 
So because I know how to take this x squared and I know how to do horizontal, sorry, vertical versus horizontal shifts, if I know that basic function, I can look at more complicated functions and figure out what's going on.